So uh, what happens to the uh, uh, Taylor columns uh, when we combine with the uh, thermal winds? Okay, so I will show these equations uh, again and again just so that you are completely familiar with them. We had started this equation in 7.13 where we had taken steady so the UDT was gone in viscid so uh, F was gone and we had this uh, remaining balance we took a curl of that and ended up with uh, the baroclinic uh, vector grad cross grad P is our uh, baroclinicity and we had derived the uh, thermal wind equation to omega dot grad U as 1 over rho grad P cross 1 over rho grad rho where we had flipped here to remove the negative sign and one hour row was moved around, right? So we this is uh, the general statement of the thermal wind. Remember for constant density we just uh, ended up with geostrophic flow not varying in the z direction which in this case is the direction of rotation and the uh, barotropic fluid with density depending on pressure ended up with this which uh, we reduce to uh, omega dot grad u equals zero when you had barotropic fluid because grad pre and grad rho are parallel to each other that's the definition of uh, baroclinicity if it's barotropic then it's not baroclinic which means these are parallel to each other uh, so it's zero and we said this is a general statement where uh, a barotropic fluid in a steady inviscid uh, regime cannot change uh, uh, in the direction of rotation parallel to the rotation the air columns or water columns become rigid they become stiff UVW none of them can vary in the Z direction in which the system is uh, rotating row so baroclinicity is that but for a baroclinic fluid we had gone through this and uh, made a simpler case for uh, water with reference density and uh, the thermal coefficient uh, of expansion depending on uh, temperature and then grad rho p cross grad rho in this case could be combined with our hydrostatic balance so you can take grad rho cross of this you will end up with a uh, baroclinic vector again and uh, g cross grad rho so we're going to plug that into our old equation to omega dot grad u our thermal wind uh, on this side which is reduced to 2 omega du dz because omega here is only in the z hat direction and we replaced the right hand side this by grad rho crossing with this which gave us minus g over rho z hat cross grad rho why because obviously this is related to the temperature gradient if we then uh, take our 2 omega as f z hat to make life simpler and replace our rho with rho ref plus sigma which is the deviation from reference density has to be small compared to rho ref as you remember then 720 this equation is essentially the same as this one we have written grad rho here but grad rho is essentially for this case uh, d omega dy minus d, um, uh, d sigma dy minus d sigma dx so just various forms of the same thermal wind equation uh, depending on whether you are doing dealing with barotropic fluid, baroclinic fluid, uh, temperature dependence of density and so on. Why are we doing that? Basically we want to see how um, geostrophic shear and Taylor columns uh, uh, are balanced we are still in the large scale balance so we have to see these things so let's say we have uh, a thermal wind uh, relation happening on this uh, Taylor column okay so what do we have when the column is standing up we have uh, density that is uh, decreasing with height right it's a stable uh, air column or water column in this case um, and density has to decrease and we are rotating around uh, this z-axis 
right? Uh, you can think of the water tank going around like this and you have the uh, thermal winds acting on that with uh, a vertical shear uh, with U increasing with Z. That's our uh, thermal wind. So the thermal wind then is going to tilt over uh, the column, the Taylor column. So we are going to have uh, if you take a transverse section here as shown here you have a rotation happening on that and you have uh, lighter air on this side and heavier air on this side okay so the thermal wind is trying to tilt it over to the right but the rotation is moving the heavier uh, density to this side and lighter density to this side lighter density would want to go up heavier density would want to come down so that would give you a curl uh, or a torque exactly in the opposite direction so the thermal wind is trying to tilt it down whereas the torque associated because of rotation that's critical rotation is giving you a torque uh, by moving densities which can balance the thermal wind okay so in a simple sense in this case the thermal wind is being balanced by the torque created by rotation why do we want that basically when we go on the sphere remember the pole has cold cold temperatures and tropics have warm temperatures warm temperatures are low density cold polar airs are high density why don't the high density f uh, uh, air uh, just move down into the tropics and push the lighter warmer air uh, up why doesn't it happen basically because you have these kind of rotational torque being balanced by the thermal wind balance thermal wind torque so stratification stratification rho decreasing with height and rotation are being balanced okay we haven't changed anything we're still geostrophic we're still hydrostatic we're still thermal wind but we're just saying that rotation is still there so rotation plays a role in the balances uh, in the uh, system okay so just get some intuitive sense for this I hope you can watch the uh, podcast as many times as you want and realize that thermal wind torque and the density torque because of rotation because of rotation are going to balance each other so that the columns don't tip over <laughs>